Hey, it's the Blue White Breakdown. We're talking, uh, well, we're not talking about Penn State football. It's Bob Founders, Dave Jones. We're going to have a very special podcast, but we're talking. Dave is not, Dave is kind of fearless. I don't know if you people have picked up on that. And he's liable to have a strong opinion with just about anyone on social media. And he got into it with uh, one of Philadelphia's uh, finest, Howard Eskin. Over the weather late last week in the well, Philly. we've had a beautiful week here of weather in Philadelphia. Has it been as bad there as it is oh, here? It's, it's just awful. Brutal. It's yeah, awful. Yeah. But, you know, April showers, May flowers, right? Yeah, so, but you had, to, you had to pick a fight with Howard Eskin, didn't you? Well, he's an idiot. See, see, he's just a provocateur. He's, he's, he was. Who single. you call it a provocateur? He's Skip Bayless. He just wants to, he, he, he understood that way before social media. Yeah, he was, he was just a provocateur. So he has really he's got a hard on for meteorology <laughs> for some for some reason. He thinks there it's voodoo science. And I happen to know these guys. I know these guys at Penn State. I know how good they are uh, at their jobs, and and they're better and better and better over the years. And they they're really good days ahead of time. So I, if you don't if you're not in in, in versed in the Phillies. Uh, they we had our opener for it. Yeah, right? had our opener here. And they moved it from Thursday to Friday because the weather just looked brutal. Or as Howard would have said, brutal, brutal, brutal. And, yeah. and you know, it didn't rain because the rain line was about this far away, but it was still an awful day. Yeah. It was like yesterday. Mm-hmm. And they moved it ahead a day, and the next day was much better. That was the only good day we've had. It was. It they was jumped really. his ass on Twitter. And, and I was like, you, you know, you don't know what the hell you're talking about, you jerk. You jerk. You're a joke. Now get out of here. And <laughs> I can't believe I forgot to text you about it last week. I texted Pickle instead. <laughs> I was rolling. I saw. I got, a, I got a backup. Yeah, my a I map a, on Twitter of how I close. I got a backup. Was. I have to back up my Penn State meteorologist buddies. <laughs> I got a lot of them. All right, Dave. Well, let's let's uh, before listen. So for this podcast, in case any, I don't think Penn State fans have forgot. Dave, in a couple of weeks, you're going to call it. Uh, you're going to call it a career at Penn Live in the Patriot well, News. I wouldn't say a couple of weeks. It's now it's looking like May 1st, maybe. I'm waiting on the Social Security Administration. Dave, it's gonna be two weeks. Trust me, my man. It's not gonna be <laughs> one you. day longer. I am it's I two am, weeks, Dave. Two weeks. Advanced pension and you know, they're in line, but I applied for social security. Maybe the old folks on this know about this. <laughs> but I applied like three and a half weeks ago. I've heard nothing. So until my money's coming. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be i'm gonna be writing all sorts of stuff that no one wants to read okay all right well that. a couple things on that note so anyway the fa- i think most penn state fans know it so yesterday on uh i put out the a, a kind of an sos on our tech subscriber group say hey do you have any questions or comments for dave you know you know we, we want to get to him on this podcast uh we're only expected to do a couple more also uh for the fans just so you know uh, Penn Live's throwing a little bash for Dave in a couple of weeks at a secret location. And Dave, I'm gonna I'm gonna make some opening remarks, and I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready. There's gonna be a there's gonna be a lot of people, a lot of former uh, Patriot News Penn Livers there, some current ones. Uh, it's gonna be a great it's in a great it's at a great location. I know Dave, you're gonna like it. You, you promised me that Kaiser that you're gonna bring Kaiser so I can finally meet him. I wish I could. I can I? I can't bring Kaiser to that place. I, can I? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the, what. Go, I don't know if that's. You might want to inquire about that because I'd be I'd be here for it. The problem I is, bring if, you bring him, him, I don't, if you bring him, he'd you go gotta, after the golf balls. <laughs> he'd want to. He'd want to go after everybody's tee shot. What is uh, that? The 18th there, or what is the 18th green? What is it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I think it's like 18 and 10 or, you know, it's usually, it's, it's, it's usually where they put those things is yeah, right. What do you see from the deck? The, the 18? Oh, you can or... see plenty, but you don't yeah, see a lot. See. I think you might be able to see, you see a, you see people hitting up on a green and you might see on another hole, somebody teeing off. No, I, I think we're going to get a dog sitter for him. That would be <sighs> bad news. Yeah. Okay. Bad All right. News. Anyway, Dave. So before we get to some comments, you were talking about it off, uh, 
off the air, so to speak, here on the Blue White Breakdown. But there is, do you have any thoughts on the Super 60 or talk 80. about Super 80? Yeah. Super 90. Do you have any, any thoughts about well, this? Well, it ain't going to be 80. I mean, the, the, the news is, that, and yeah. uh, Stuart Mandel, I think, had it from The Athletic, yeah. and a really good get for, for them and for him. Um, but they're finally broaching the subject of a super conference. And I think that was just for public consumption, the 80 teams, to keep all yeah. the schools that are not going to be in the loop. Yeah. It's only going to be like 34. <laughs> well, it would be better if it would be no more than 40, I think. <laughs> because of those, are the, those are the schools, if you've studied revenue as long as I have, and the new revenue figures are out, and I'll probably write those from EADA, and Sportico mm -hmm. has done a lot of stuff. The division between the people who have money and don't in college football, the programs, is just so stark. And it's not just about the TV contracts. So I, I really only think about 40, 42 schools max can play in this sandbox. And some of them are not in the SEC or the Big Ten. Yeah. And I think, I just think when it comes down to cases, they will exclude a lot of schools. Anyway, the, the news was that yeah. they're starting to talk about a super conference, which if it happens, and I think it's going to happen, yeah, that'll lead to a collective bargaining agreement and limits. It's going to be a good thing. Limits on, on the portal when guys can transfer, because if you collectively bargain something and NIL and what, how much, how much you can make, if you collectively bargain something, Everything is legal. There, there are no, uh, there, there's no antitrust argument against that because you've, you've collectively bargained. Uh, the, the other hurdles will be Title IX and all that, but it's the, it's a first step is the point. So it was very interesting. Um, Penn State makes the cut no matter how you slice it. So Penn State fans won't have to worry about that. But I, I think the other great offshoot of it is if you have a super conference. You're not going to be playing. Did you see the the 2025 schedule? Who was it? Florida International, Nevada, <laughs> yeah. and Villanova. Villanova. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do do you really want to be paying for that as season ticket holders? Do you want to be paying for those games? I, uh, I you got it. seven home games and three of them are that. Well, you know, James Franklin's going to be doing that every damn year as long as he's here, and he's not the only one. Oh, yeah. Remember the Auburn game when we were down there yeah. and we were going, this is great. Isn't it great, James? Isn't it great? He was like, no, it. Yeah. No. Yeah. no, yeah, yeah, no. I hate it. No. And he did hate it. He wants the easiest route to making the playoff, and that's what all these coaches want. That's what they all want. And they will play those games if they can play them. But a super conference, by definition, I, I think TV networks will run it. They're the impetus behind this. They're not going to want any more of these games because they yeah. can't sell them. Yeah. It's going to be all seven and five and eight and four teams in the playoffs. That's okay. Yeah. I had an argument with Dan Wetzel about this a couple weeks ago because I called him up just to argue, as, as I do. No and way. He says, you did? Just to argue? <laughs> and he says, Jones, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? You know, we, we tried to name like Michigan State might be at the bottom of that group. Yeah, the, the 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 school that just doesn't have the where with all the hang. Great, What's great, gonna happen with, great venue, gray skies. Gonna miss it. What's gonna happen when Michigan State goes two and ten? You know, <laughs> and I said it's gonna be like the Premier League. I mean, does yeah. name name us name a team at the bottom of the Premier League? Do they quit coming to the games? Uh, uh, relegate? Are you talking about relegation? Well, Stop. down there when they when they don't quit coming to games, even though they're at the bottom of the standings. No, no. The teams in the NFL don't quit coming to games. I mean, who's the most pathetic team in the last? Uh, Charlotte, right? The Charlotte's, Carolina Panthers. Charlotte's in the conversation for pathetic. Yeah. Yeah. Did did they quit coming to games in Charlotte? Ah, uh, they kind of do a little bit, but I mean, you know. No, they didn't. They come. They spend their money. Yeah. They they buy season tickets no matter what. That's the way it'll be. That is the way it'll be in college football. As long as you're in the group, you're going to be happy. And if you don't want to be in the group anymore, they're going to have a waiting list to get in it. So two and 10, yeah, we're happy. That's the way it's going to be. I, I really think so. Do you think some older Penn State fans would, would be secretly, not secretly, overtly happy if Pittsburgh did not make the cut? Because you yeah. know how much 
that, about that rivalry that they yeah. they cherish so much. And I don't think they do make the cut. No, I mean, they make the cut you're with out. eighty. Narduzzi, you're out. <laughs> They'd make the cut with eighty, but they ain't gonna be eighty. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Pat, it's a loosely, loosely 80, 75. Just look for the invite in the mail. It's probably delayed, like Dave's social security information. You're probably going to get an invite, though. Just keep checking your mail. Yeah, I mean, it. it the, the, a lot of things will go into these decisions, but it's, it's basically between Pitt, Pitt and Penn State, it's the same argument that TV networks made. You remember when Penn State first got in, in the Big Ten? Yes, and people were immediately saying, "Well, Pitt, Pitt will be the 12th team," and TV people were like, "No, <laughs> no, they're not," <laughs> because Pittsburgh is basically—I mean, it's a Penn State market. It's yeah. part of what they bought, and there is no Pitt market out in Pennsylvania, in the rest of Pennsylvania. It's a very segmented market. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think they make the cut. I don't. Yeah. I know. Also, Pittsburgh currently a little bit of it underwater. Not a big deal. But uh, hopefully they'll, it'll be dry out in Pittsburgh soon. I was seeing some of the pictures uh, about the flooding. So hopefully. It's lovely in April there. <laughs> <laughs> My son, Nick, just got a he got a great job. And he's in Delray Beach, Florida. Oh. With TRX, the, uh, the, the big uh, fitness company. Yeah. And. You know, it's 80 every day. I don't think he's going to be loving life in July, but I mean, right yeah. now he's, he's spent a lot of time. He went to school in Pittsburgh and he's, he's, he's not unhappy not to be in Pittsburgh right yeah. now. It's a lot of cloudy days there. Dave, I don't, I don't need, mean to put your son on the spot, but maybe you could just share this bit of info. Would he say that Pittsburgh women and Florida women are roughly the same equivalent? I'm not touching that, Bob. <laughs> If that was me trying to put you on the spot. Yeah, yeah, I'm not touching that. Ah! I, I know. You think I you think you can get me to say anything at any time. I can. I, I bet you I can. When you when you're about to turn 67, you, you learn a couple things. <laughs> he like, didn't take the cheese, Penn State. Like when when your wife asks you if she looks fat in this. <laughs> you don't you don't tell the truth. Even if it's not the truth, you'd it, or 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 how about this one? Uh, Ann and I can talk about these things now because we just you know it, it's a no, lot of water. Years ago, here. but now you can talk about 30, it. 37 years in in June. Um, I know, but we laugh about this stuff now. But I, I was asking her a couple of days ago. Uh, I was I can just like there was a a, a woman up at the natural food sh shop. Uh -huh. And I had Kaiser up there and she was a couple of uh, steps behind and she came out and started talking to me about Kai, beautiful dog, beautiful. And, you know, the woman was hot. She was. She's she, probably about 40. I mean, I'm a wrinkly old man. I'm going to scale of one to 10. What was she, an eight, nine? As a 40 year old woman, she was close to a 10. See, but, I can get you to talk about this stuff. I can't. Well, this is this is just the funny part of it. Uh huh. And in the old days, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, <laughs> and, and Anna, you, you know, your wife is going to say she was when you're alone. She was pretty. She was pretty, wasn't she? <laughs> <laughs> and when it's when you're in your basket and then hoping you would take when you you're in the, when, when you're my age, you can say, I thought she was hotter than hell. But smoking when, hot, when, honey. When smoking you're 30, hot. yes, smoking. In fact, I'm going over there later just to see if she's there. <laughs> but but you can't, when you're 35 or 40 or 45, you just say, who? I don't know who you're, who you're talking about. You know, you just absolutely play dumb. You have to. You yeah, just don't. Yeah. It's, kind of like, it's like having tenure in your marriage. Like you can pretty much... You're not going to get fired. You're not going to get she, fired. She can do it too because yeah. nobody's getting fired. Yeah. No one's getting fired. No way. All right, Dave. No, hey, yeah. are you up for some questions and comments from okay. our from our tech subscriber base? I, I I did screen them. I think you're going to like just about all of them. And let's let's just get it underway. All right. All right. All right. First one is I think is one that everyone wants to know. This is uh, I'm just going to go with first names because it was email addresses. This is from Matt. Is Dave still going to be writing in some capacity after retiring from Penn Live? There's a lot of mats, aren't there? 
There's a lot of mats in the running. It's a mid-state thing, man. I got a running joke with Gordy Jones from Lancaster that every producer on every radio show is named named Matt. Matt. Yeah. (laughs) The guy says, okay, you're going to be on one with Stogie and the Bad Man in a couple minutes. (laughs) This is is Matt, their producer. (laughs) This is Matt Smith right here. You're going to be, yeah, you're going to (laughs) be. All right, Dave, he asked you. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't really. I don't have the energy, frankly, at 67 to do the grind of a football season. So I'm not interested in that. If they would want to bring me back on a uh, per diem yeah. basis to do basketball, sure, I'd do it. But I don't think there's a lot of interest really at Penn Live in Yeah. Well, I wanted to basketball. get it. I wanted to get it. So I think also you could interpret that question another way. I think I honestly believe this. I think a lot of the, the, the Penn State people, like in terms of maybe – a bigger project, like maybe a book or, you know, any, any or a college basketball, but what, I mean, is there anything on your plate that you can share? Maybe not, I have, I have maybe spoken, it's not in 10 lives, somewhere, doing something else. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, I want half the reason I want, I'm, I'm ready to do get out is I, you know, we're, we're, we're good financially and I want to do things I want to do. I don't want to do stuff I have to do. Don't want to <laughs> And, and we won't talk about that. I do not want to write about Penn State football every day. I, I don't. That's not true, but I don't want to do. Like, what if slideshows came back, Bob? What, what would happen? Would that be your breaking point? What if they came back? Uh, that might be. That was a rough three-year stretch. <laughs> and Penn Live readers might know that there was an era of slideshows. Oh. They, they, oh, they were, oh, they they were like labor-intensive. They were. Um, I, I've got, I've been talking to Jerry Palm, our mm-hmm. uh, analytics guru who, who writes, or who works yep. for CBS Sports yep. uh, on both college basketball and college football about an analytics site, a specific kind of analytics site for college yeah. football. Yeah. Which I, I think, think James Franklin would hire you at Penn State to be his analytics guy. <laughs> these are, these are from, all right, I got, I got the, I got the support. I got the the stats from Dave Jones, who is our analytics guy. Fourth down, uh, two point conversions. We want explosive plays. Uh, happy about that. Happy for the opportunity. Uh, that would be great, wouldn't it? That would be awesome. Ah, <laughs> oh, good times. All right, here's one. Here's one. Another one. For there, you. there are analytics, I think, in football that are not on any other, not on any site. Right. If you know of Ken Pomeroy, think yeah. of Ken Palm for college football. Wouldn't that be great? It would be. It would be. And I think you would here. really get into that. And then I've got a color baseball box score. that I don't want to hear any more about that. I've heard that story like 3,000 times, man. Yeah, I mean, 34 years you've heard that. Or how, yeah. long, have you been, how long have you been there since 90, 92? 93. Yeah. 93. Good. So you've All heard right, that this for 30 one, years. Dave, here's one, here's one that is not super serious from Peter. How many, I don't know, I don't, you're going to, I hope you get, you get this reference. How many Garcia ties does Dave have? He says, I have 16. Do you know what he's talking about? <laughs> How does this guy know? I don't yeah. know. Can I, you explain that to us? He knows. I mean, people, if you know, you know, it's one of those okay. things. Jerry, Jerry Garcia started okay. making ties. <laughs> you know, the late Jerry Garcia had it started a company making ties, I don't know, 25 years ago, okay. 30. And I think they're still good looking ties. I mean, young people have way moved on from them, but you yeah. got to be who you are. So when I go to the press box, I uh-huh. would, a lot of times I have Jerry Garcia ties. I used to get them. You remember when Pittsburgh's airport was like this new thing that they had like a mall oh, yeah. in the airport, and that was a big deal in the early 90s. They were the first ones to do it. Uh-huh. And they had this little kiosk called the tie rack. And every time I'd go through the Pittsburgh airport on the way back from a, a football game or a basketball game, I'd stop off the tie rack, and they always had Jerry Garcia ties, so I'd pluck a couple. I probably have 12. All right. Time. So that guy obviously must watch the the post game videos. That's how he picks up on that, correct? Yeah, isn't it amazing how the internet has has concentrated people in weird niches? You know, that just <laughs> <laughs> there's probably a Jerry Garcia tie site someplace, and that guy's the, you know, I'm the director of the site, and I was just wondering how many Garcia ties you have because we we had some questions about it on the site. It's, 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 
Dave, here's another one uh, that, that I couldn't, the, the name, the email address was too garbled, but the question is legit. I think you're going to, Dave, how much will you miss press box food? Hey, as Big Ten press boxes go, how would you rank Penn State's? Uh, top three, top four. At the top. Yeah, definitely, definitely say. the higher, higher, higher yeah. end. So, you know, I'm sure Mid-State man's not happy about that because you, you go in your fancy press box and you got your nice food and you're nice and warm and we're out eating hot dogs out in the stands. So you guys don't even know what the score is most of the time, but you got your fancy food. It's it's good food. It, it's it's good food most of the time. And if you know, they, they don't know us anything. And sometimes I bring my own because I'm diabetic now. So I bring my own stuff just to yeah. make sure, which we very frankly should have always done because you shouldn't be feeding yourself with the, the, the organization, the food of the organization you're covering gives you really. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we kind of forget about that sometimes. We don't eat a lot of it, but I don't know. Do you eat a lot of press box food? I don't, I don't I pay just, attention. I always like, I usually sneak like uh, some food in, like in my, in my sack, whether it's like a half a sub or some pretzels. Yeah. I yeah. Do. So what, what is the worst in the big Michigan thing? State's terrible. <laughs> They make it's you bad. pay for. What well, was the place where you only had hot dogs? Like time? Was that Purdue? Like stale popcorn. We Mich Michigan State makes you pay for it. Yeah, Michigan yeah, State makes not, you pay I for it. Too. I wouldn't mind paying for it because it's we just we would expense it. But what you're paying for is not good. <laughs> it's just not good. All right, Dave. Now this is one of the questions I think you're going to really enjoy. I re I mean that. Okay, this is from Jeff. Throughout your long and distinguished career at the Patriot News slash Penn Live, was there ever a point in time where you had wished you could have moved on to a locale where you could cover a more competitive or relevant college basketball program? No. Okay. And the reason is I always had this affinity for the underdog nature of Penn State basketball. It and for the longest time I thought. This there's no reason this can't succeed. Now I'm not now I'm not so sure. After 35 years of it, I'm not so sure. I just think that maybe the the fan base doesn't care enough to form the momentum, the impetus yeah. to demand. I mean, if if you are from the Midwest and you understand what basketball is in Indiana, for instance. Mm -hmm. at, at Indiana and Purdue, I mean, there's a firestorm going on about Mike Woodson at Indiana. And they haven't done any worse or any better than Penn State. I, well, Penn State's beaten them four straight times, so I guess, that's, yeah. I guess that's worse. But that alone, Penn State beating Indiana four straight times in four different venues, mind you, is enough for people just to lose their minds. <laughs> They don't lose their minds here. They don't care. And most people just don't care. But I loved the hardcore followers of Penn State basketball. And we had so much fun. Look look at this. This happens to be right here. Look at that. Look at that. Because I was doing a little no, That's like one of your favorite Penn State seasons, right? 91? Well, it was the season before, yeah. Oh, okay. This is this is 90 this is pictures from the 90-91 season. And I mean, this just happens to be there here because I was doing some research. There's Dave Daggett's doing an entry pass to James Barnes or somebody. Um <laughs> that was 1991 when they beat UCLA and Syracuse in the NCAA tournament. And that team had nobody who even sniffed the NBA. Nobody. And UCLA had six guys who played in the NBA who combined for 47 NBA seasons, including Don McLean and Tracy Murray and Gerald Matkins and Derek Martin. And, yeah. and that's the thing about Penn State basketball that I love, that you're constantly with the underdog. And the underdog is fun. I always loved underdogs, so the answer is no. Yeah. I, I I love doing that and suffering through the bad years because the good years were so much fun. Yeah, uh, 91, 96, 01, 11, uh, last year, 
those were great, man. They were great. Dave, do you know what I remember about 1991? I remember uh, Tone Loke, Funky Cold Medina, just <laughs> blasting on PM uh, radio stations. Like, were you listening to Bruce Bond? Bond? Were you listening to Bruce Bond, too? I hadn't moved out here yet. I was stuck with the Lehigh Valley version of that. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. I was on a Bruce Bond show a couple of times back when he had one. <laughs> you had to watch your, watch your tongue on there. You could get yourself in trouble with... Uh... <laughs> The Patriot News Company, if you say the wrong things, because he tried to get you to say stuff. Yeah, he was a, he was a little bit of a he, he kind of relished that. Yeah, I didn't like that guy. I never went on the show. All right. I, I just thought he was a I covered radio. So radio is radio is a scummy business. It really is. All right, Dave, another question I think that is really uh, right up your alley. Um, here we go. Let me get it. Uh, this is from a David to a David. I'd love to know some of the athletes Dave appreciated in terms of their interactions with the press, who kept their heads up and treated people well in the face of adversity, who had the great, who had a great sense of humor, would love to get a little peek behind the curtain. Beyond that, Dave is going to be sorely missed by this reader. That's a great question. It is. That's why I, I, I cherry picked the ones I thought you would really like. You you and I'm gonna I'm gonna answer it, and but I don't want to poison your answer. So I've got some guys in mind. You go ahead and answer that. You've been doing it since nine. You've been doing you've been doing this almost as long here as I have. Uh, well, I think specifically, I think he wanted to know maybe about Penn State, whether it's basketball or football players. So yeah, I've been doing it. This is my like twenty. I got one guy in mind, and he was kind of like Bill O'Brien that way. <laughs> and I always loved Bill O'Brien. So that's one guy. Did he say players or coaches or or what? I think he said matter. athletes, but I yeah. think I think I, I I think the key is behind a peek behind the curtain of refreshing candor from athletes that's not I, kind of regurgitated or canned. I think Bill O'Brien would be at the top of that oh. list because he was genuine every single moment. He couldn't yeah. help it. He could not help it. Uh but Harry in that vein, Jr. huh? Larry Johnson Jr. <laughs> well, he was he was crazy, but uh, yeah, Larry Johnson after the the uh, bowl game, the bowl game in Florida. What was that? Citrus Bowl, it was, Auburn. It was Citrus Bowl, yeah, the and, first yeah. one. Um, yeah, that was not. That was Auburn. That's right. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. of Curtis Sinus after Florida. Um, I would say Matt McGloin was like yeah. one of my favorite guys because he was the same kind of thing, unvarnished, and he, when he was. You know, it's the opposite of James Franklin. We saw we saw the real James Franklin that one time after what was it, the 2018 loss to Ohio State, right? Oh yeah, when he talks about elite, elite? and being one yeah, percent yeah. better and never going to give up. We're gonna <laughs> was that great or what? Yeah, and that's the really the only time where I can yeah. say that he definitely was not yeah. putting on yeah. his. Yeah. I don't want to say facade or act, but he was presenting. And when you're you're yeah. in that position, I I believe I could reflexively be presenting to the recruits, the the donors, the fans. Mm -hmm. You got to take care of that stuff, especially now. I could probably fall into that rut myself. But but I have always appreciated the guys who just could not do it. And Matt McLoin could not do it. <laughs> When yep. you when he when he saw something that he didn't like, he just said it. And sometimes he was in a crusty yeah. mood. And if he didn't like a question, even if it wasn't meant a certain way, he would say, "What what does that mean?" I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't even know what that means. You know, he would. Yeah. Dave, in that I same that. Vein, in that same vein, when you think about that that 2012 Penn State team, where um, you know the sanctions came down. And teams were kind of pretty much free to poach their players right before the season. Uh, two guys that stick out to me. Do you remember when Mowdy, uh, Michael Mowdy and Mike Zordich uh, got together with it and they had some people behind them. They, they, they helped, excuse me, they held that press conference and said, you know, a bunch of guys behind them. We're staying. We don't agree with this. You know, we're, we're Penn State people. Um, it was very much unvarnished. And they were kind of like that after games as well. Yeah, I think that whole team was had a whole bunch of guys like that. Yeah. And O'Brien was the perfect coach for them at that time. Yeah, he was. You cannot underestimate 
the job he did just keeping that ship afloat. Eight and four and seven and five. We all thought they were headed for losing seasons. Did you? Uh, I mean, I correct. did. Correct. Especially they they lost the first game to Ohio at home. They, you know, and and started 0-2 yeah. after the Virginia. Uh, Not only up. that, but the tough love even instilled itself in someone like Sam Ficken, yeah. who, who, who could not make anything at Virginia and was part of the reason for the loss. And during his two years under O'Brien, he became a dependable kicker. By 2013, he was a good I think kicker. He still might be either – he's almost he, – if he's not still in the NFL in some capacity, it hasn't been very long. He's, he, he's kicked a long time. He's like Robbie Gould, right? Robbie Gould was not a great kicker at Penn State, and he, he kicked – you know, he's, he never missed a kick in the, in the postseason. And he was not I, that – I don't think you can <laughs> – the the psychological tricks you have to put on yourself as a kicker, as a place kicker, that is a whole game beyond the game that nobody else. I don't think there's any but other position that people can poo poo place kickers. Yeah, but that is certain personal pressure that I think it's really admirable. What Robbie Gould did, you remember where were we coming back from Illinois or someplace yeah, in the 04 uh, season? It's either 04 or 03. The, yeah. the, the six to four game against Iowa, <laughs> Kirk Ferentz took the intentional safety that gave Penn State four points, partly because he didn't believe Robbie Gould <laughs> could make a, a kick because one kick would have, would have won the game for Penn and State. And he wasn't wrong. Am I right? <laughs> wasn't wrong. Am I right? Uh, <laughs> I, I, we were, it might've been the end of that season. Maybe, I don't know, at Indiana, someplace like that. Yeah. And we ran into Robbie Gold's dad. Right. And he I was like, that. you don't have to worry about him. He's going to be, he's going to be fine. And he figured out a way. I think he talked to, didn't he call Adam Vinatieri? Um, I can't and, remember, but I do remember, I remember you specifically talking to the dad. And I do remember Robbie had his share of struggles and to see him kind of morph into this, like, not only a good kicker, a clutch postseason kicker, like you could have never foreseen it. Uh, kickers don't make the Hall of Fame very often. Who, yeah. Who's in it? Stenerud? Yeah. Who's in it? Morton Anderson, Stenerud. It's it's a pretty short list. Yeah. Could he make it? Is it possible? I, I, don't, I don't think so. That's more of like a longevity and points and like, you know, he's not quite, he's not quite there. Dave, one guy I wanted to ask you about, and I don't want to get too, but I always, when I, when I thought about this question as I read it, um, I just wondered if you could just talk a little bit about how much you appreciated. You're talking about people that are just tell you what they think, and they don't they don't necessarily care if it's on or off the record. You mentioned uh, you mentioned Bill O'Brien. Matt Millen, I think, is a guy that um, not necessarily always for a story, but he would always he would always when I asked him a question, he would always tell me what he thought, and he didn't care. Yeah, here's you know? here's a little bit behind the scenes slice. Yeah. I'm not sure. I think I've, he's one of the great people to talk to. And one I'm of the not great sure I've told this, actually, and I've told so many stories so many times I can't keep track, and maybe I've told it. But when we were trying to figure out – you remember when I asked you when we were trying to figure out who the coach who was going to replace Paterno would be <laughs> during that firestorm in 2011? And Fun times. All, Fun times. All sorts of things to do. And Matt Millen, I got him on the phone, and I'm calling everybody because I'm casting about casting lines to see what bites. And I think Matt had an idea and I've never asked them this directly. So I might be talking out of turn, okay. but I think he had an idea that they might look at the NFL Yeah. before anybody did. He told me that he said, he's told me a couple times on the phone and I kept asking about college guys. And he kept I, I, I don't want to, I, I think, I don't think you, you can, you can avoid looking at the NFL. I think that, I think this, he's trying to tell me, okay. He's trying to tell me. And, and so I rem, I asked you specifically, cause you're an NFL guru. Give uh -huh. me, give me 10, give me 10 names or thereabouts uh -huh. of coaches, assistant coaches in the NFL who might be good candidates. And you came up, I don't know if I said 10, but you came up with 10 names. Yeah. And the the assistant at uh, Tom Clemens was on there. I remember that. Yep. Yep. And was there was another name. assistant who, who with the Packers. Was that Clemens? I can't remember. That was that was Clemens. Sure. There, uh, there were three guys that stood out and I remember circling them. And one of them was Bill O'Brien. 
because he had both college experience, yeah. a lot of it, Maryland, Georgia Tech, but also this great NFL experience with Tom Brady. And I'm thinking that, you know, the, the, and Tom Clements was another one. There was a third. And then I set it aside and forgot about it. And when we were tracking the plane, the Penn State plane, I was tracking the plane on flight aware. And back then you could get flight data on exactly where it was going. And not only that, but you who was in the in plane. Massachusetts. Huh? You could say, what were they doing up in Boston? Yes, Boston. <laughs> and I keep calling Mark Blodgen, who's still an old friend from the Boston Globe. And and he's and I keep, I'm thinking it, it, it's it's hard to remember this now, but but it was such a cataclysm. Um, what was going on with Sandusky that you actually thought maybe they would contract the program and go into and and go full in on integrity that they might actually talk to Tim Murphy, the Harvard coach, and the plane was going into Boston. So I kept asking him about Tim Murphy and Blotch and keep going down to Harvard and Murphy saying, well, what are they? What are you, I haven't heard from Penn state. They tell this guy to quit, quit bugging you. And I didn't, I didn't put two and two together or we would have gotten that story and not Chris Mortensen, not Chris Mortensen who ended up breaking it. Yeah. And we could have had it. And I, it's drive the, every time I see Blotch and, I'm going to go down and see a bunch of old boys in Dallas next month after I quit. <laughs> they have this old dogs conference and I'll probably chew this over again because it's the one, the one story I wish I'd gotten because we could add it. You were sniffing in the right if direction. I, just if not. I had taken Matt Millen's tip and just, yeah. you know, Matt, if you're listening, thanks for, uh, Thanks for all the all the great conversations, man. He's just a, a great now guy. He's gonna, he's, gonna say, guy. he's gonna say, I don't remember saying any of that. <laughs> all right, Dave, I got one more for you because we're starting to go a little bit long here. But I I do think you're gonna appreciate this question. And I also think that the Penn State fan base who's watching this or listening to it, some of them are gonna appreciate that. It's a little this is a tongue-in-cheek question for some, but it's not a tongue-in-cheek question for others. It's this is from a guy named Reitz, R E I T Z. Will Dave will Dave be attending more Ohio State games in person as a fan through his retirement? It's I know. But I think I think there's this image out there that you I just think it's it's one more chance to just kind of tell these people. I think he was busting your chops with that question. But Probably, I, yeah, I think a yeah. lot of people are like, "Oh yeah." Oh yeah, <laughs> but some people are like, "Yeah, yeah I'm sure he is." Yeah. Buckeyes, he's yeah. going to go dot the i at halftime. <laughs> and I just thought that's a it's a question that it could be interpreted two different ways. That I think that was a sarcastic question, but I do think there's some people that genuinely think that you. If, just if people only knew, I think by the time by the time <laughs> when Penn State was first in the Big Ten in 1993, was playing in the Big Ten. Yeah. I immediately loved seeing Penn State beat Ohio State because it was funny with my old colleagues back in Columbus. I got a huge kick out of it with Ray Stein and Tim May and Bob Baptist and all these guys. I loved I loved it when Penn State won. I never, right? I'm not a I think I've I've amassed a body of work that proves I'm not a homer. But I like I liked always like to see Penn State. No one thought it was hilar more hilarious than I did yeah. when they beat him 63-14 in 1994. <laughs> and 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 you remember we always thought John Cooper was going to get fired out of that. And yeah. if he hadn't beaten Michigan, I think that year he finally beat Michigan. He was he was going to be out or they might have tied him. I don't remember what saved his ass, but no. I mean, I I really the one, the one loyalty I have to Ohio State is my program of industrial design, mm -hmm. um, which is what my degree is in. And I went back to their 50th anniversary, uh, which was 2017, I think, and saw all my old friends. And well, I mean, we lived in, it was a tough program and we lived and died at Hopkins Hall. I went back there and it was, it was great. I mean, we just laughed and laughed. It was, I, I really still have affinity for my degree from there. Sure. And 
The marching band. When the marching band comes out. I was going to bring it up. I, was gonna, I know how yeah. much you love that it's band. It's true. I mean, because that takes me back to a whole different time yeah. for when I was 11 and and going with my sister or my and my sister was an undergrad there at Ohio State. And man, if you were at Ohio Stadium and you see that band come out, it's it's a thing, man. It is a scene. It is. And it really is. It is. It is better than and I, I'm sure all fans of all schools. That's what's great about college football. Yeah. I mean, and it's what college football has on college basketball because there ain't no band coming into the stadium. But there is nothing quite like the Ohio State band coming through the tunnel in that cadence and, and spreading out because you've got like a little time there where they're, they're filing onto the field before they start up. And then after they do the, the fight song and, 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 and across the field, then they do the alma mater. I mean, everyone at Ohio State knows the words to the alma mater. I could do the whole thing right now. Those are the things that I loved about the school, the school, the school, not the football program. I mean, the, I haven't rooted for Ohio State football since the 70s. I mean, I honestly haven't. When I got into newspapers in the early 80s, that was the end of that because I, I was seated with the, the understanding that you're not a homer you do not, and it's a completely different time now. You've got all these little bloggers and people from websites who wear like licensed gear with little Nittany lions on them. Now, that is abhorrent to me. <laughs> I mean, and, and they've got them at Ohio State too. That, that you would be actually be covering a program and wear something like that. No, no. So that's how I feel about Ohio. And plus, Ohio State football had two of the greatest con men of all time. And Jim Tressel, and and really a, a, a just a full on prick in Urban Meyer, one of the one of the worst people ever in college athletics, who cannot get a job now because of right. NIL on the portal because he can't coerce kids into doing exactly what he wants anymore. So I hope I've made myself clear. I think I think Dave, I was just going to say as we wrap this up. Well said. Uh, I just, but I I still have to say, Dave, and I think. You, you might agree with me. I still think there are some people maybe in Perry County that are not <laughs> buying this. And they're like, you know what, Dave Jones, if you <laughs> like Ohio State so much, why don't you marry it? <laughs> Before we go, I was thinking a couple of days ago, I was like, like reflective for a minute the about the infamous West Perry. Yes. Perry. Yes. Yes. I still can't believe you wrote it. I can't still believe you got away with it, but God bless you. Well, you know what I'm talking about? The, the... Didn't you refer to their fans as green teeth? Oh, no, I'm talking about before that. When, <laughs> before you, you were at, at the Patriot News. No, I thought like... you their fans like. <laughs> Who knows? But, but you know, I saw stuff up close my very first fall. At the Patriot News, because they sent me out to Elliottsburg to cover a West Perry Susquehanna Township game <laughs> with, with Frank Snyder coaching Susquehanna, who's this old old boy from out there. And and Susquehanna Township's got a lot of city kids, a lot of black kids on the team. Mm -hmm. And they're playing West Perry with all the Hill Jacks from, <laughs> from, from there and coached by Bob Anderson. And it almost turned into a race riot. And I wrote it, man, because the worst part about it was the coaches started faced off in the middle of the field. They called the game with six minutes to go because it was getting out of hand. I mean, racial stuff being screamed from by the West Perry fans. And then there was a fight on the field and the refs said, that's enough. We're calling it. And then Bob Anderson and Frank Snyder like square off in the middle of the field and I'm right there watching it. And I wrote everything. And, and Nick Horvath was like, this is incredible. I mean, this is, this is really awful. And that was my introduction to that, that world. I mean, it's, it's a different world. It really is. Yeah. But uh, I still, I, I do think, I think we've covered a lot of good ground here, Dave. And uh, <laughs> I think we're going to, I think we might do, at least one, maybe two, maybe more, depending on on your social security uh, people. But uh, I think the fans uh, really appreciate um, 
the fact that you call it like you see it and you always have always did. And even when Penn state wasn't good uh, and even when they blew it in big games, you too, I, buddy, Trevor I, Maddox still not happy. I with think, you. I just think they always appreciated the fact that you never, you never gave Joe or James a pass when they, when they, uh, that's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. That's what yeah. we're supposed to do. Yeah. Afflict the comfortable, comfort the afflicted, right? So yeah. they're they're comfortable a lot. All right, Dave. So two weeks from today, it's a Thursday. I'm looking forward to your uh your uh your your uh we're throwing, a, we're throwing a party for Dave and he's there's gonna be a lot of tremendous, tremendous people from the current uh from the current climate, but also from his past. And we were talking, Dave was sharing some of the people that are coming. Uh, I won't, I'm not going to mention any names, but it sounds like it is going to be um, awesome. I'm going to call this place and see if you can bring German shepherds. Uh, you do it. I if can bring them, I, we'll bring I, them. I'm connected. I will, if, if, but if, if you can bring them, will you bring them? I'll have, absolutely bring them. Anna won't want to bring him, but I, Nick and I will want to bring him. So, <laughs> Right. But Nick, Nick's going to have to take – Nick's coming up from Florida. He's going to have to take care of him unless you want to take care of him a little bit. We can pass him around on the leash, right? One step at a time. First, let's just get you retired, my man. Let's just get you retired. Right. Yeah. Then we'll worry about the big talk. Well, yeah, we might. I might be here in July for all I know. <laughs> all right, Dave. Good talking with you. And we will be back maybe next week, but definitely the week after.